Sigma Tiger News all up in your grill with the hottest, juiciest beef online. TGIF people, Rich Homeless, the Bestiality Bus, and Stop Just Stop Oil. Give it up. Give it a rest. <laughs> TGIF, people, what do we got cooking today? The rich homeless, what the heck does that even mean? Let's dive right in. Boom. Brand new luxury apartment building is now open for the homeless in Los Angeles. With 278 units in the Weingart Tower, each unit costs $600,000. The entire project was $165 million. So what the heck? They're going to have homeless people just live inside this thing? Let's find out. ...story development known as the Weingart Tower. It's intended to help people currently without shelter on Skid Row. This will be LA's largest permanent supportive housing project. There is an entire floor of offices for caseworkers, and the list of amenities is pretty impressive. As you mentioned, there's a gym, an art room, a music room, and a computer room and library. People living here will enjoy six common balconies and a cafe. The $165 million project is receiving permanent financing from Proposition HHH, which voters overwhelmingly passed in 2016. The new tower is also receiving state housing funds and $56 million in state tax credits. Boom! So literally the taxpayer is paying for this brand new facility. $600,000 unit for someone who's unhoused. So likely it's going to be migrants living in this thing, I would imagine. People on Skid Row. I don't know how you get in there. I don't know how you get away with it. I don't know how you spend $165 million dollars on a 276 unit apartment building. That's insane. So way to go, uh, Gavin Newsom, you did it. You did it again. They wasted like $24 billion on uh, trying to end homelessness and they have zero to show for it. California is, t it's gone, see ya. French teens, 12-year-old arrested for gang rape, anti-Semitic attack of Jewish girl 12. Horror has no limits. Absolutely. So this is a disgusting display of behavior from three French boys who were arrested in the gang rape of a 12-year-old Jewish girl in Paris. A sickening anti-Semitic attack, police said, prompting President Emmanuel Macron and other officials to demand schools crack down on racism and hate-fueled violence. Yeah. There's no place for it, people. Under the skin, we're the same within. It's the government that creates all these divisions and categories and whatever. Like, it is the new one I keep hearing. BIPOC. Black interracial people of color. Let's come up with another one next year. The victim from uh, Courbevaux told police the boys raped her, made death threats, and hurled anti-Semitic slurs at her during the assault on Saturday. The girl was specifically targeted over her religion, the Nanterre public prosecution office said chief rabbi of france haim corsia said he was horrified over the attack and called on his nation to crack down on such despicable acts of anti-semitism yeah they attacked her because she was jewish and they decided to exact their uh, level of justice or revenge or whatever they thought they were doing onto this person and it would be totally okay because they're uh obviously subhuman right the people who did it not the jews anyway astronauts stuck in space at least another week as boeing and nasa troubleshoot starliner spacecraft issues well they barely got it off the ground it took forever for them to get it to the launch pad they had two false starts like seconds before liftoff they went ahead and said nah. beads of sweat just rushing down the astronauts face well guess what they made it to the space station they couldn't dock. There's a whole bunch of helium leaks. Oh, no. Astronauts sweating profusely. They dock. They're there. Well, guess what? That's not the end. How do we get these guys back home? The Starliner is falling apart. 
At earliest, they can land in New Mexico on the 26th. So at least almost another week up in space orbiting the Earth. SUNY Williams and Butch Wilmore arrived on June 6th after a barely successful launch. Expected to stay only a week, the two will now be arriving on Earth before 26. Yeah. So, do they have enough food up there? Do they have enough oxygen? I'm sure they do. Will it all be fine? I mean, to be honest, the Tiger, I believe that uh, they're not coming home. And deep down inside, ever since the beginning, I didn't think they were going to make it up there. I could be wrong. Pray to God that I am wrong. But uh, I got a real bad feeling about this Starliner and Boeing. They don't have the best record for safety. Just the other day in Malaysia, the engine caught on fire. Tires are exploding. Doors are blowing off. I mean, if I was going to take a flight, I would 100% verify if it's a Boeing. And if it was, I'd be like, I'm not going. Not going on Boeing. Elon Musk says two mentally ill people tried to assassinate him. Musk says the men were detached from reality. In a stunning disclosure, Elon Musk is saying that two different unrelated men have attempted to assassinate him in recent months, going so far as to travel to the billionaire's hometown of Austin, Texas, with weapons to carry out the murder. In an ex-audio space with Canadian professor God Saad on Sunday, Mr. Musk said that there have been two individuals in just the last six months who traveled to Texas in order to kill him. It's very rare for me to get actual death threats or anything, Mr. Musk said when asked about his fame and personal security requirements. No one's ever said, I've got this terrible beef against you and I'm going to kill you because of the following well-thought-out ideas. I have had two cases in the last six months of two people who are unfortunately very mentally ill threatening to kill him, Mr. Musk continued. They have come to Austin to try to kill me with guns. One guy thought I put a chip in his head like a Neuralink or something, Mr. Musk said, citing his neurotechnology company that aims to cure physical disabilities like quadriplegia through brain implants. Basically just an extreme schizophrenic, Mr. Musk said of the first man. The other would-be assassin had stopped taking his medication and suffered from a total detachment from reality. Uh, I'm not sure what this is. Messrs. Musk and Saad were discussing the realities of being the world's richest man and his inability to walk through life in anonymity, Mr. Musk said that he had experienced a decrease in happiness that occurs when the fame level exceeds that which is useful, noting that he remembers being famous enough to get a good table at a restaurant at short notice, but now cannot dine out without being bothered by other patrons. Oh, hey, Elon, can I get a picture? Hey, Elon, can you sign my uh, spaceship? Yeah, people are very nice to me, but I do often get stuck in the, can I have a selfie infinite loop? Yeah, so wear a mask. Do what Michael did. You know, sunglasses, little mask. Boom. No one knows it's you. So yeah, stalking, inappropriate. Going to people's houses, inappropriate. Well, let's check out what the big guy's doing. He was having a bit of trouble there. We showed some videos there on Wednesday of him having a bit of trouble. He's having a little bit more. This one, just getting into his vehicle. Let's have a look. Almost. There you go. Lift him up. Be a bo good bodyguard. Give him a little boost. There you go, sir. Well, I mean, it's labored. At the very least, he's not making it look easy. He's making it look like he's trying to get in a transport truck. He could barely get his knee up to waist level. The dude's 81. He's not going to make it to the next presidential election. There will be a different candidate. Mark my words. All right. Club Q shooter sentenced to life in prison plus 190 years after pleading guilty to federal hate crime and gun charges. Well, what happened here? The shooter, who opened fire in Colorado LGBTQ plus nightclub in 2022, killing five people and injuring 19, was sentenced in a federal court Tuesday to life in prison without the possibility of parole plus 190 years. Just a little icing on the cake there. Sentence came after Anderson Lee Aldrich pled guilty to 74 federal hate crime charges and gun charges in connection with the shooting. So he hates gay people and lesbian people and queer people and trans people. But guess what? One thing they don't mention is that he was non-binary. Or she was. I don't know. Anderson's kind of like one of them middle names. U.S. District 
Judge Charlotte Sweeney handed down the sentence after hearing from the victim's families. Fueled by hate, the defendant targeted members of the LGBTQIA plus community at a place that represented belonging, safety, and acceptance, stealing five people from their loved ones, injuring 19 others, and striking fear across the country. Yeah. So Sweeney, actually the first LGBTQ plus federal judge to serve in Colorado, did not have the discretion to impose a different sentence, she told him, setting the plea agreement, but she emphasized the importance of Aldrich's decision to plead guilty. In doing so, she said Aldrich admitted to carrying out the attack because of the victim's actual or perceived gender identity or sexual orientation. So we have a mentally ill, non-binary, identifying individual, meaning I'm not a woman, I'm not a man, I'm non, I'm non-existent, well, you are now. You're non-part of society. You're in jail. Good job. You fool. Should have went to the doctor. Moms of transgender girl athletes says Florida's investigation has destroyed her daughter's life. What? A Florida public school employee who f was facing firing because she allowed her transgender daughter to play girls high school volleyball is assailing those who outed her child. Okay, so Florida has this law to combat Title IX, saying that, like, you know, your biological sex is where you will play your sport. A Florida public school employee who faces firing because she allowed her transgender daughter to play girls' high school volleyball assailed those who added her child, saying Tuesday that the ensuing investigation destroyed the girl's life. Maybe you destroyed it. Jessica Norton said her daughter was thriving at Monarch High School in suburban Fort Lauderdale before an anonymous tipster notified a Broward County School Board member in November that the 16-year-old was playing on the girls' varsity volleyball team in an apparent violation of the state law. 2021 Fairness and Women's Sports Act bars students who were born male from participating in the girls' sports. And some of these laws also have like uh, caveats that like if you didn't enter puberty, if you did have the opportunity to uh, avoid that with puberty blockers, then sometimes you can enter into the opposite gender sports. I believe that's kind of like the benchmark that they're using in NCAA and Olympics. That November tip launched a school district investigation that led to the Norton facing the possible loss of her job as a computer information specialist at Monarch because she allowed her daughter to play. Investigators also said she didn't, as part of her job, change the child's gender on school records back to male from female as required by district policy. Norton told the school board Tuesday that her daughter had been elected freshman and sophomore class president, was selected the student body's director of philanthropy, and was a homecoming princess. That all ended when the investigation began and the girl left Monarch. Of course, because she's a boy. They destroyed her high school career and her lifelong memories. Norton said, I saw the light in my daughter's eyes gleam with future plans of organizing, attending prom, participating in and leading senior class traditions, speaking at graduation, and going off to college with the confidence and joy that any student like her would have after a successful, encouraging high school experience. And 203 days ago, I watched as that life was extinguished. Now she attends school online. Well, here's the deal. Is her imaginary world more important than the reality of all the other students and what they're going through? No. It's not important. It's not more uh, significant. It's nothing. The majority always has rule over the individuals. And that's democracy, or what's supposed to be. None of the board's nine members responded to Norton, a seven-year district employee who received the stellar evaluations before November. Treatment of transgender children has been a hot-button issue across the country over the last few years. Florida is among the at least 25 states that adopted bans on gender-affirming care for minors, and one of at least 24 states that adopted a law banning transgender women and girls from certain women's and girls' sports. So you're looking at it, we got 50 states. Half of them have adopted something stating that they shouldn't be doing this. That's enough. Give it a rest. Stop causing all these people to have problems, whether you're trans or non-trans. It's just not reality. And if someone is upset with reality and the fairness of life, too bad, because life's not fair. It'll never be equal for everybody. It'll never reach that level. Never, ever, 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 ever. Court hears lawsuit challenging Fairfax County Public Schools' gender-inclusive policies. Let's hear about this one. Friday, a second court hearing was held for America First Legal's lawsuit against Fairfax County Public Schools' gender-inclusive bathroom and pronoun policies. FCPS's policy allows students to use bathroom based on their gender identity and expects students to use the preferred gender pronouns of classmates. Very huge dichotomy here. Why doesn't that person just move state to another 
place where they're accepted. That's how it is. You know what I mean? Like there was a civil war based off of slavery. The North versus the South. And guess what? The North were helping slaves get through. Just like these states are helping transgender people live the life they want to live. Well, let them do it where they want to do it. Don't force other people to do it to uh, affirm one individual. There are places they can go. Not every place should be that. Not every place should be welcoming. Not every place should be a deterrent. There should be options. There should be a difference. Hence, impossible equality. The lawsuit, which was filed on behalf of the FCPS student, argues the policy violates her sincerely held philosophical and religious beliefs and discriminates against her on the basis of sex and violation of her rights guaranteed by the Constitution. And there you have it. It's superseded. Your feelings are superseded by law and regulation that we've created for everybody. It's good for most, not good for some. That is how law works. We're glad that they're stepping in. This is obviously something that's been a source of contention in Virginia, especially northern Virginia, for a while, where policies like this really compel students to speak on controversial political and religious issues in violation of their rights. And the Supreme Court of Virginia has recently stated you can't do that. Yeah, it's a freedom of speech, you know? It's not compelling of speech. You can't compel people when there's a freedom of... Anyway, there it is. Alleged bestiality bus with dozens of animals stopped in Pennsylvania. Yikes, look at this. So we got some turkeys, some chickens. Not sure what else was there. Horrific to even consider what this thing has seen. Let's dive in. A bus suspected of being used for bestiality operation was pulled over in southern Pennsylvania, causing authorities to notify the Adams County SPCA of strange situation. The incident occurred Saturday night when police said they came across a broken down school bus full of animals which was pulling a trailer that also contained live mammals. Cops contacted the animal rescue workers who said on Facebook the cargo included 30 birds, 4 sh shepherd breed dogs, a bull and a pony. They were able to secure the animals overnight and remove them from their squalid conditions the following day. The dogs were being fed the chickens and the bull and pony were being used for bestiality purposes in another state. Ugh. Good lord. The organization said Tuesday that due to past crimes committed by Sean Hirschbein, the driver of the bus, they would spend $10,000 to check the animals for human DNA. Oh, God. The animals aren't ready for new homes, but the Adams County SPCA, which planned to close for a few days to deal with the matter, was seeking donations to help cover the care of the animals. Pennsylvania NBC affiliate WJC said Hirschbein was arrested on a standing warrant in West Virginia for disturbing, distributing obscene material to children. It's currently unclear what charges he could face, if any. Well, if they find human DNA, I'm sure he's going to get charged with bestiality. Perhaps some sort of bestiality prostitution ring. I don't know. Anyway, so therein lies the issue. Like, there's laws against that. You know what I mean? Just as there was laws against transgender stuff. So, it's not fair to these people who want to bang animals and get the rocks off. Like, you know, they should be included too. This is where it's headed. At what point does that fine line get erased? Well, seems like it's trying to be erased right now. Boom. What else do we got? Mayor-elect pulled off boss and assassinated the rear resort city of Alcapoco. So there you go. Uh, yeah, you run for mayor in uh, Mexico and you're liable to get killed. They said there was like 83 politicians or something like that that were killed in the most recent elections. Not like the federal election or the mayoral election, not one specific, but all types of elections, whether municipal, all the way to state, local, federal, whatever. Like 82 or something like that, people were assassinated. So that's crazy. So obviously there's a big problem in Mexico with the cartels. They're running everything. You go against them, boom, you're dead. We, will, we like the drugs, we like the money. Anyway, he was taken off the bus when it stopped near San Pedro La Playas and shot just like that anyway whatever be careful in Mexico how about these oil just stop oil so there's a joke Al Gore's nephews are everywhere this time it's sabotage in the UK five years in prison should teach them a lesson yeah so let's, let's see what exactly did this person do they got their little bolt cutter there
Well done, ladies. You did it. I mean, vandalism, destruction of property, trespassing, and uh, these things are expensive. So the people who own those are probably going to get all up in your grill. And five years in jail, yeah, sure. What you did was illegal. There's a, pu there's a punishment for that. All right, and here they are in Stonehenge. Look out. They don't stop there. so weird how they just like collapse and dead weight like that's their that's their their fight i don't know man apparently it's not like you know it can wash off whatever i don't know it looks like pepper spray or something a paint anyway these fools are out there defacing things desecrating things ruining stuff because of oil and uh, they're dumb they have no idea what they're talking about Oil's the best thing on earth it created everything we have today. Yeah, sure. There's other things that could be better. Focus on coal. Okay? Not oil. Focus on coal. Okay? It's not oil, people. It's coal. Coal's the problem. Get China and India on it. Anything else going on here? All right. 14-year-old girl went missing in Indiana. Five men were arrested for kidnapping her. Three are from Honduras. Two are from Mexico. They were each charged with two felonies. They were allegedly taking her to California to meet a man. She was just thankfully found safe in Missouri. So there you go. A bunch of illegal migrants kidnapping children, trying to sell them to uh, pedophiles. And uh, as well, multiple DHS sources told Bill Malugin and Griff Jenkins, the two men charged with murder in the strangulation killing of 12-year-old Jocelyn Nungare in Houston, are both Venezuelan nationals who crossed into the U.S. illegally this year and were caught and released. By Border Patrol, Mayorkas and Biden, bloody hands. 26-year-old Franklin Jose Peña Ramos crossed illegally into El Paso in May, was caught by Border Patrol and released into the U.S. with a notice to appear. Please come back to court, sir. Don't rape children. 21-year-old Johan Jose Rangal Martinez crossed illegally into El Paso, Texas in March and was caught by Border Patrol and was released in the U.S. on an unknown basis. So, yeah, you just go on. We don't have the system sorted out for to give you a piece of paper to come back, so uh, we'll just uh, see you around. Of course, we reached out to ICE for a formal statement and comment. They told me they're looking into it. More details to come as we learn them. Yeah, so there you have it, people. America the Great Republic. Uh, you're not allowed to say that anymore because it's a, a war on democracy if you say that truth. Anyway, TGIF people, try and stay safe out there. Enjoy the weekend. Sigma Tiger signing out.